I'm here today with a great friend of mine, Patrick Hockley, who I've known for, goodness, 35, 40 years, a property developer, similar to myself. Patrick, thank you so much for, for, for doing this interview with me, because I know that it's not something you do all the time, so I do appreciate it. <laughs> it's a pleasure, John. Pleasure. I mean, it, the fir my first memory of you is you revving your Peugeot, whatever it was, up, 205, was it? And they were about 1985, Five. and waking me up. Um, as we both um, lived on the same street. That's right, that's right. Small, small world, but um, you know, we've been doing all sorts ever since. We have, and, and more recently, of course, you've, you've, you've got into this um, very successful, this, this, this planning side of things that I can't stand, but you obviously have got a talent for it, and you've, you've had some serious results on planning. Um, developing. Do you want to just tell us a bit about what you're doing? Yes, it's, it is interesting, John. I mean, considering what we've, we've come from, and now we're doing um, promotional sites planning and uh, obtaining planning on sites that ordinarily you wouldn't have got consent. So it's embracing the system, not fighting it, working with the councillors, working with the planning officers, and delivering what the national policy um, requires. Because so many people, like me, I mean, you're a dinosaur like I am, really, aren't you? Let's be honest. You're about you're slightly younger than me, but not a lot. And and all over the years, it was sort of pounded into us really that the council, you know, are always going to be fighting you. They're never going to give you planning. You're going to have to fight every inch of the way. And you've really been very cleverly turned that round to such an extent that actually you're working with them, and they're pleased to see you. Exactly that, John. I mean, there are so many big developers out there that just fight the planners and say, look, if you're not going to give me planning, we'll just get it at appeal. Uh, we have we've really haven't appealed anything, and we've, we've had some very good results with, with planners, and also they've been very pleased to see that we don't dodge the affordable housing element, and everything we do, if it's required, we put in sometimes 35, sometimes we put in earlier on, um, on a site, we put in 50% affordable. Um, but the interesting thing is about affordable, it's 50% of the units. It's not 50% of the square footage. So it's right. a very interesting so mix. Yeah, so that's an interesting point for people to, to remember is that on, you know, over, over 1,000 square metres where you have got to provide one in, one in three? One in three. One in three social have to be social houses. You don't have to, you don't have to build them as big. No. As, as, as you would the other houses you're going to sell. So that's, that's a really important point, and a point, actually, that I forgot about. Mm. So tell me some of the deals that you've done recently, Patrick, and how you've worked with the councils and what you've achieved. Uh, we've had some good results. I mean, we've, we've, we've got some planning that we've passed um, on sites that um, haven't been allocated. Uh, so these would be exception sites. So, uh, so when you say not allocated, you so mean... they're not within the not within <coughs> the, um, the 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 boundary of the right. of the okay. village or the town. Yeah. So they're on the outskirts. Yes. So we will go for an exception site where we will partner up with an affordable affordable housing provider. They will come on board with us to show that we can deliver affordable housing. Yeah. And we will go fifty fifty. So fifty percent will be open market. Fifty percent right. will be affordable. Which, which for me, uh, that worries me to death. As a as a as a dinosaur, that worries me to death to think that I'm going to have to be giving away 50% of the properties uh, to, to to a social housing requirement. And when I, when we say social housing requ uh, requirement, we're talking about working with a housing association because yes. they're the one they're the only ones presumably who can actually deliver uh, the 50% yes. that you're offering. Yeah, but I think the most important thing that we we've, we've got to understand as developers and property people is that we have a moral responsibility to deliver affordable homes. Good God, you've, you've been reborn, Patrick. It, well, could, no wonder you don't ring me so much as you used to. Goodness <laughs> me, you're reborn. Well, Fantastic, you know, you've seen the light, and I still haven't. You, Obviously, I'm hard-nosed, miserable developer still. We, <laughs> we, have, to, we have to have this, this ability to leave a legacy. Like an evangelist you oh, are now. praise be. <laughs> Fantastic. So give us an example of a couple of deals that, you, you, you know, that, that you're doing at the moment like that, just in, in terms of numbers and things yep. like that. In terms of numbers, we, we bought a little site just uh, on the coast where we've got, um, uh, initially we've got planning for two detached houses. 
uh, we when we went back and realised that four semis would be more valuable than yeah. two detached. Um, when changed the planning, and we got four semi-detached houses, uh, which we've um, built. We've built out now. We've let two to keep, and we're selling two to wow. pay for the ones that we're keeping. Yeah. So reducing our, uh, our indebtedness, yeah. not making a profit, keeping the profit within <coughs> the, the yeah. existing properties that we hold, and then move on to the next site. Mm. So that's a really simple strategy that anyone can do. I mean, yeah. you're huge experience, but people watching this, that's very simple, isn't it? It's you a know, simple. Any, anyone could do that, r- yeah. literally, um, uh, with a little bit of guidance and, and help. And, 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 and so give me an example on the bigger, because you do bigger deal, a lot bigger deals. Yeah, that, the, bigger, the bigger deals, we, we would buy a piece of land subject to planning, um, and or we would buy it on a... a percentage basis where we give someone a percentage of open market so we have a right. discount off open market to do all the planning and the upfront right. risk costs yeah. and we've got to, you've got to understand that these this is money you can't borrow <coughs> to um, develop you know because you're actually putting the money up for planning and in in most cases it's anything between 50 and 150 thousand pounds yeah. which you have yeah. to put in so it's not, which is a, yeah. which is stake money and you know, until you sell it, that's when you get the money back. But yeah. if you can't sell it and the market changes, yeah. that money then is at risk. Yeah, well, we'll talk about the market a little bit later. But I mean, that isn't for the faint hearted, is it? No. I mean, uh, no. Uh, uh, no. And, and it's not, that isn't for everyone. However, of course, if on a smaller scale people want to do this, and I talk about this in my seminars sometimes, land, it's called land promotion, isn't it, basically, where yes. someone owns the land. You are, they don't want to go for planning. You, you invest the money into the planning and then you share the profit with them on the uplift, 70-30 to yes. in their favour or something like that. Yeah. And, and, and you also, um, I know that you've got a very big commercial deal going on as well at the moment, which I'm very, very jealous about because I should have seen that. I should have done the deal and you did it instead. And you didn't come to me to want to say, John, do you want to do this together? You decided you'd be greedy and do it all yourself, Patrick. Which I can understand. Well, you know, sometimes I need a little <laughs> bit of help. But there are, there, are some, there are some good deals out there. But I think the key element of anything in terms of land, developing and planning, there is only one thing you can change in the element of development, and that is the cost of the land. You can't change right. the build cost, you Very can't change your financial costs, no. you can't change your professional costs, no. but you can change the land price. What you pay so for that yeah. is where the secret magic dust, if we're allowed to say that, yes. is um, the land price. That's really interesting. And for everyone watching, that's so important. If you've made, you know, if, you, if, this, if once you've got planning, if you don't own it, you're still you know, buying it subject to planning even or whatever you're doing, You've still got an opportunity, if you don't get the plan you want, to go back and reduce the price that you're paying. And if a landowner is sensible and understands that, look, you went for six, you've only got four, then clearly the price has to come down. And, yeah. and so many people I meet feel that they can't go back and help, uh, go back and renegotiate anything after they've agreed it. And I am constantly saying to them, look, you can go back, you can renegotiate. Sometimes you have to. You know, we've all made mistakes where we've agreed to pay too much mm. for a property or land and then had to go back and say, look, I'm sorry, but we've looked into this further and unfortunately, you know, we've got to reduce uh, what we're paying. And, and mo- in most cases, the owners of the land understand it mm. a- and will accept it, especially if it's, if it's a, a very hot market, maybe not, but on an average market, um, most people will, won't they? Yes, yes, they will. I mean, the other, the other important factor is in, in the times we're in, is the cost of materials. Yes, um, and comes up all the time. And we're finding at the moment we are, you can lock yourself into a building contract with your contractor and it may be champagne when you sign the contract, but halfway I through know, the you contract... you like a bit of champagne, Patrick, oh, all yes. these deals you do. Mm. Halfway through the contract, yeah. your contractor will turn around to you and say, look, unless we have another 30%, yeah. um, we can't complete. No. And it's all very well saying, well, we'll go and find another contractor. Yeah, but they're going to be even more money. And they're going to be even more yeah, money. So absolutely. you have to put this contingency in all the time yeah. and make sure that you've got enough slack in the land. Yes. And whilst you've got that land, 
revisit the planning, revisit what you can do with that piece of land. Can you tweak the planning? Can you get another thousand square feet? Can you get another unit? Can you do this? That's and, and that's where people are sometimes misguided, mm -hmm. uh, where they don't look outside the box. No, I would say, I would say your skill over the years, Patrick, has been to turn it round, to work with the local authorities, to manage to gain, which you have done, extra square footage on virtually every site you've ever done. Mm. If you, you know, say, oh, we can get 10 houses on there, you've gone and got 15, or whatever it might be, or mm. 20 or 30. I mean, you gave us a very modest example of what you do earlier, um, you know, two detached to four semis, but, you know, you're being very modest because you've done some much, much bigger schemes than that, I know. Um, what's the biggest um, increase you've got from when you started to when you when you actually developed. Um, well, one we one we were um, one we actually um, got consent on for. I think we got forty two. Yes. And um, we went back to the planners and said, "Look, we know we'd like one hundred and six. Mm. Wouldn't we all? Wouldn't and, we all?" And they said, um, "Well, we think we can support that application." Unbelievable. And um, I said, "Thank you very much." Yeah. Now, you make that sound so simple, Patrick, but for people watching, we know it's not that simple. It's, it's not that you know, simple. It's not that simple. You've made it sound so easy, and everyone will be like, oh, we can all do that now. I couldn't, I couldn't have done what you did. We've well, all got different skill sets in property. I couldn't do what you, you no, do. No. I haven't got the patience to do what you do, um, or the contacts in many ways. But, I mean, because you work with them, and that's a great lesson for everyone, because you're working with these people on a day-to-day -day basis and, and working with them rather than trying to work against them, mm. of course, they, they have confidence in you, don't they? Uh, indeed, and I think a lot of it is, the, is, is also the district councillors. When they see right. what we've done before and when they yeah. see, you know, we will deliver what we, we said we are going to deliver uh, and we will give the affordable houses, which is a very important... And I, I know I keep going on about it, but it's a very, very important... Um, way of, of not only delivering the affordable houses that we need but also giving the community uh, in small villages there are these villages are being eroded yeah. by development and the wrong kind of development they're turning into these um, dormitories for people going to the offices not so much now but the bigger houses yeah. there's no smaller houses where the village fabric can stay no. where the the granny can look after the children of the young people living in the houses it's it's just it needs a shake-up and i think we'll see this coming uh, and especially in suffolk norfolk and essex we're seeing a lot of these villages um, changing face mm. and they need to be more of a community they need smaller houses for local people and bringing that into mind, we have our uh, East Anglian Community Homes project, which where we build um, uh, smaller houses in the community uh, to let at a reduced rent. So these are for people that can't earn too much money to um, have an affordable house yeah. through a housing association. Right. Yeah, so, they're, they're, so, so they've got, they've got a deep, reasonable job, but yeah. not enough to live in that area. Exactly, yeah. so they've got good jobs, yeah. both people working, uh, yeah. they don't tick the boxes to get an no. affordable home, yeah. um, but they don't earn enough money to pay full market rate for the open market. <coughs> right. So we've set a company up now to develop those properties where we've got some soft interest rates, we can invest long term, yeah. Um, at low interest rates. At low interest yeah, rates. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we, you know, again, we'll, we'll discuss that later. Mm. So, just going back to the social housing, which is the bit that really, you know, is such a problem for so many developers. I know that there's a scheme where you can actually become a social landlord yourself now. Yes. Um, where you become the housing association, basically. Yes. yes. Is that something you thought about doing or not? It's something I thought about. I had several meetings about it and uh, soon came to the very, uh, very quick conclusion it's not for us. Right. Um, it's, because? It's because it is, is a lot of work for nothing. And it really doesn't... It, 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 it doesn't work. It's easier to... Non-profit making, it's a, I it's a, the start. Well... <coughs> Don't start me on the non-profit making organisations where the chief execs on 250,000 a year. Yeah. yeah. 
So um, it's hardly non. It's, it's yeah, hardly, it's hardly yeah. non-profit making. So it? I think the, the the view on that is that you need to have an affordable housing provider on board. Gotcha. Um, you need to be realistic about the values you put on your affordable housing plots, um, because so many of these affordable housing providers are funded by Homes England. Yes, who oh, I know about, of course, because yes. I bought I yep. a lot of money from them and just paid them back. Yep, but Homes England, as we know, um, uh, have got an awful lot of money to you distribute. And, and Homes England, for people watching, is, is the government bank, really, property yep. bank, really. And you can yep. go to, I went to them on the wine rack um, and borrowed you know, 15, 20 million from them. Um, and they'll support schemes that are, are more difficult to get funding on. Yeah. And also for the social housing, uh, the housing associations can go to them to, for, a to, grant. to, to for grants and so on and, and, and funding. Um, no, it's, that's very interesting. Um, so, Patrick, we've known each other a long, long time. We've done some great deals together. Not so much recently, actually, because you're now on this on this pilgrimage, as I call it, for for social social housing and uh, working with the local authorities which I'm not really part of. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm, um, I should be really, to be honest with you, but I'm still banging away, doing the older stuff, maybe buying blocks of flats and everything else that I've always done. And you've, you've re, you know, re, uh, you've sort of re, reinvented yourself a little bit into doing this, the housing and the, and the, and the, the clever bit with the planning and everything else. But can you remember some of the early deals we did together? Because we, in the in our twenties, it was great fun, wasn't it? It I was mean, great fun. It was great fun. Um, there was, it was exciting. It was new. It was exciting. Well, I mean, you know, we were probably the first sort of duo to put the studio apartments. Yeah. Into Ipswich. We we were that you know I forgot 100% about hundred percent mortgages. Hundred percent mortgages. They were the days. Yeah. Ninety nine. We're talking about nineteen eighties, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. So, yes, you're right. We started to discover that people would, could get a mortgage on a studio flat. And you work for an estate agent. Well, you're meant to be working for them. I think you work for yourself more than anything else, Patrick, to what I might be saying. But we, you know, how many deals did you find us and, 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 and how many deals did we do together? I mean, we must have done well over 100 in Ipswich yeah. in a very short period of time yeah. because we found a niche that works. And I say this to people, especially at my seminars, where... You need to find a niche that works for you. Mm. And it may only work for two or three years before everyone catch, catches on to it. And then you find another niche. And at that time, it, you're quite right. It was stu- I forgot about that. Studio. It was studio, studio, it was studio flats. And, and we, we paid were, the legal fees. That's it. We paid, paid the legal the fees. Fee. Paid the survey fee for them. They got I 100%, drove them to the solicitors. <laughs> yes, you drove them to solicitors. They got 100% <laughs> mortgages. And they put, they put no money in. Yeah. It was unbelievable. And yeah. um, like you said, we did a, we did a lot of deal a lot of deals like that in the um sort of 1985 to 1990 mm. i suppose really yeah. wasn't it yeah yeah and then the property recession came and uh things got tough but we all survived it and we and we moved on to different 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 angles and different mm. different parts of the of the of the property market but those days i think just think they were exciting days weren't they you know they they considering the in those days people moan about interest rates today oh absolutely and i say this to people and people don't believe us but the average mortgage house mortgage um for probably 40 odd years until the last 10 years or so was mm. about 10 percent yeah uh, and of course that's why so many people now you know, spend all their, all their, so have so much spare cash to buy, you know, to go out for dinner twice a week, mm. to buy about five coffees a day and everything else, because their mortgage rate, what they pay for on their mortgage is so mm. cheap exactly. compared to what it used to be. Now, exactly. it will go up, yeah. but, I, but I, I, I don't know about you, but looking towards the future, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen in the next few years? Because Well, we all <coughs> like to have crystal balls, mm. um, as you, we both do, we talk to a lot of bankers, we talk to a lot of we financial do. people all the yeah. time, and our funders would give us fixed rate money at 3.45 for five. Yeah. Yeah. So they've got some confidence in the market there. Yes. And I believe we are going to see some new products in the market um, right. in terms of properties, in terms of work from home, yeah. in terms of highly insulated, uh, as I've just shown you with what we're building here, 
highly insulated, high-tech modern homes that if the boiler goes on, mm. there must be an issue somewhere with insulation. Yeah, gotcha. You know, we're sitting in one of our holiday pods now. It's fantastic. The heating's not on. I could on. move in tomorrow, to be honest and, with you, but I can't afford um, the rent, I don't think. But No, but I, I think <laughs> the, the, the key is that, that we're going to need cooling down rather than warming up. This, this pod's got a lot of glass in it, Yeah. so we've got air conditioning. Yeah, it's beautiful. And yeah. it, it, there's going to be some new things happening. So yeah. fabricated, prefabricated homes yeah. uh, that will be uh, fundable right. um, yes. somehow. Because um, up till now, they've been too expensive. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we're seeing, seeing, or we had been seeing, some very good products coming in from Eastern Europe. Yes. Um, uh, there's going to be some bumps in the road um, yeah, there. Yeah. And uh, manufacturing in this country is... is, is is expensive, yes. Um, but I do think it, the the future is low um, low carbon homes, yeah, and highly efficiently um, insulated, heated, yeah. and that's 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 where we're all going to be because yeah. it's all down to what it costs energy, to run energy, Abs energy, 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 energy. And the one thing the government haven't done over the last 10, 20 years, they're all guilty of it, both Labour and Conservative, is they haven't insulated any of these no. houses. No. I mean, it's going to be a fr if you've got an insulation company in the next ten years, you are going to make millions yeah. because it all has to be done. Um, Patrick, it's been a pleasure as always talking to you. Thank you so much for agreeing to do the interview. I know you don't do many, um, and um, I'm just so pleased that you've been so successful over the years, and uh, that you continue to be so. So thank we've you very much. We've had some fun. We have, and we've continued. Continue to have, to have some Thanks. fun.